morning. Please join me with our opening prayer. Glorious God, source of joy and righteousness, enable us as redeemed and forgiven children to always rejoice in singing your praises. Grant that we sing with our lips, we may believe in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts, we may practice in our lives. So that being doers of the word and not hearers only, we may receive everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join us in our hymn, Spirit of God, 2117 in the hymnal. standing for our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Please remain standing for our scripture reading from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. She is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive her because it isn't looking for her and doesn't recognize her. But you know her because she lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. 
since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Hmm. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Anybody confused yet? Those six little verses can really tie us up in knots. Jesus says, love me, obey. An advocate will be with you forever. The world doesn't know her, but you do. She's in you. I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. (sighs) No wonder those Celts created a knot as a visualization of John's understanding of God. And I think, Bob, did you, you, Bob was not able to get it. It's a, it's a knot that um, has no beginning and no end. It overlaps and um, it has no start or finish. And the pattern goes on indefinitely. And it symbolizes um, the divine's never-ending love. Up here it might turn us into knots, but here it's never-ending. So I can get this kind of knot. I'm not so sure about the mind twisting that John is so famous for. He is the great mystic, the spiritual thinker, and he outdoes himself today. And so I have to distill it down and look at that nitty-gritty to seek the simplest and the most base element of what Jesus is saying according to John. In our hearts, our minds, even though sometimes it's tied up in knots, and our soul. And so in order to do that, we have to think like Jesus and act like Jesus and have compassion for others like Jesus. And I say this often, but loving in the way of Jesus was never meant to be easy. We can't be pushovers or weak in purpose. We must be grounded. Now, society is uh, constantly confronting us with that groundedness with reasons why loving uh, like Jesus is not good for the economy. It may not be good for our political party or good for our own livelihoods. And I can see why so many of our hymns and our scripture equate loving like Jesus as a battle. We put on the armor of God. We march in line with others of the same mind. And we celebrate when we achieve victory in Jesus. But what if we didn't see it as a battle or victory, but simply as our way of being, set apart, selfless, giving, humble, tolerant, patient, gets harder. What would the world look like then? We would be marching, but it would be to the tune of a different drummer. And so the world, come what may, can't be changed much by individuals. 
but it can be changed by thousands of like-minded people going about their daily lives living and loving like Jesus. And so we're back to trying to figure out what loving like Jesus means. And we can dilly-dally over the definitions of love and talk about the Greeks and all these scholarly definitions. But how to really, truly understand it is to live it out. And when you watch the news, any news, and you will feel overwhelmed by the violence, and the hatred, and the greed, this lurking danger in our world today, it's probably always been there, but now we can watch it 24-7. We are so overwhelmed. It's easy to just hole up in our own little world be concerned only about what affects us personally and do nothing rather than get involved. Totally understandable, but not Christ-like. Jesus gave us two commandments, and both have to do with love. Love God, love your neighbor. Not just a little bit, but with heart, mind, and soul, and by our actions. So that means we have to cultivate that being tolerant and patient with others, people's faults, or even our own. Be helpful, kind. But maybe the most important, and perhaps even the hardest, is to sacrifice our own wants and needs in order to provide for others. Loving with that lofty moral nature, with a love that saves and restores, is the divine task that is set before us. Our very first verse, it began with, If you love me, obey my commandments. Boy, did we go round and round with that last week at Bible study. Deciding that it isn't an ultimatum at all. It's a statement of fact. If you love me, you can love the way I love and fulfill my commandments. And Jesus goes on to assure his disciples then and now, by obeying his commandments, we will never be alone. We will never be orphaned. We will always have that strength and guidance. The advocate, the comforter, the sustainer, will be in us to draw us close, closer and closer to the living and the loving God inside us all. A man named Thomas R. Kelly wrote a book called A Testament of Devotion. And he eloquently describes God love inside us in this way. Deep within us, all there is an, is an amazing inner sanctuary. It's a sanctuary of the soul, a holy place, a divine center, a speaking voice to which we may continually return. Eternity is in our hearts pressing upon our time-torn lives, calling us home unto itself. It is a light, 
It is a light within that illumines the face of God and casts new shadows and new glories upon the human face. It's a seed stirring to life if we do not choke it. Here is the slumbering Christ, stirring to be awakened, to become the soul we clothe in earthly form and action. He is within all of us, offering us light, life, and love. Joyce Rupp calls that inner voice that's in us to keep it close, to connect it with God in God's ways and giving us direction for our lives. Despite what she identifies as our chipped and flawed human condition, we are to proceed to move forward into that future passionately, patiently, steadfastly loved by God. And so I think what we must do to remind ourselves of that divine presence in our lives is to imagine a small country cemetery on a hill in the middle of the prairie with the breeze blowing through the cedars, meadowlarks calling from the field, and we look down at our feet and see four words carved into stone. Thy will be done. Amen.
Our prayer this morning will be accompanied by the song called The Gift of Love. Glorious God, source of joy and righteousness, enable us as redeemed and as forgiven children to always rejoice in singing your praises. We pray this day to recognize your deep and abiding presence in us. We seek your Holy Spirit to reassure us and lead us into a future with hope. On this Mother's Day, we pray for all mothers. We pray to honor and bless all mothers. We pray for sons and daughters who love their mothers. We also pray for those hurting on Mother's Day and pray for those without moms on this day. We pray for single mothers, grandmothers, stepmothers, and mothers who stand in when needed. We pray for infertile mothers and mothers who have lost a child. Your Holy Spirit is Sophia, a spirit of wisdom and strength. May she surround all mothers on this day of celebration and sadness, bringing them joy and peace. With hearts filled with love and compassion, we pray for those who are hospitalized, ill with blood infection, whose families need your comfort and strength. We pray for those serving in the armed forces whose mothers are worried and fearful. We pray for Christina Parker, who is ill with bronchitis, that she may heal quickly. May our gift of love, spoken with bravest fire, is not offered in vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain. With spirits longing to be made whole, let inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are freed. Let us join our voices together to pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. During this time of uh, offering, when we'll pass the plate, or not, we have some announcements uh, to share with you today. Uh, Reading on the Rock, Kathy Salico, uh, you don't want to miss this one. It is just an excellent story uh, that Kathy read to us this week, one of her favorites. Um, And it's about um, not being left out and how God cares for us and includes us all. That's uh, posted on Facebook and on YouTube around 7 o'clock tomorrow night. We could still use a couple volunteers for our Memorial Day dinner. Um, I'm just thinking that if by the time we set up, serve, and clean up, maybe 3, 3.30 until about 6.15 or 6.30, something like that, if you have some time available, even a partial of that amount of time, we could really help, um, help, need help with that. We're serving uh, blessing plates. Uh, so uh, we've already got guests that have been coming asking about it, so they're counting on a dinner on Memorial Day. And also we have an announcement. Um, we have this celebration on June 25th. If, if you've heard me say the 24th a hundred times, forget that. It's the 25th. Don't come on Saturday. 
Um, and Chris McGovern is putting together a bell selection for the June 25th centennial service. And what we will play is called change ringing, and which means that you randomly uh, ring the bells. There's no set music to play, and bell ringers will only have to meet two times in order to make this work. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bashir. So if you're interested, please uh, contact uh, Chris McGovern, uh, see her or email her. It'll be a lot of fun and a great way to introduce the service. So let us stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Gracious God, receive these gifts given from a loving heart. Bless them and use them through us as we bring about the loving nature, your loving nature here in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I invite you to remain standing for our closing hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. So grant that we may sing with our lips what we believe in our hearts. May that be so as we go forth into this Mother's Day and throughout the week. And the, together the people of God say, Amen. Amen. And I invite you to be seated as we march to Zion.
Just a little less than Angel. Not by far. <laughs>